Hello, everyone. Um, um, uh, oh, I'm presenting uh, pre uh, the Palo Alto, support of Palo Alto, basically what we have added in uh, 4.3. So a bit of introduction. Uh, my name is uh, Syed Ahmed. I am a developer at CloudOps. Uh, CloudOps is basically a, a, a company which manages, uh, builds clouds for uh, public and, uh, pub, uh, and enterprises. So basically, we build, deploy, manage clouds. Uh, we use a lot of uh, Citrix products. We have uh, 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 in our infrastructure a lot of Zen servers. We use a lot of NetScalers. Uh, we also use uh, CloudStack heavily. Uh, we're based in uh, Montreal. Uh, in today's uh, session, uh, I will uh, talk about uh, some of the work that we have done in integrating uh, Palo Alto, uh, which is an enterprise uh, level of firewall uh, in CloudStack. Um, so this feature was uh, developed by Will Stevens, uh, who is also a developer at CloudOps. He's not here, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I'll go over the basic uh, feature and um, uh, I'll uh, talk about what challenges we had in the implementation. And then finally, uh, I'll, uh, I'll give you a demo. Okay, so here we have uh, a standard uh, installation of uh, CloudStack. Uh, or uh, so, uh, so you have that as a basic network. So you have guest VMs, and then you have a virtual router. So uh, in this session, whenever I talk about uh, network on cloud stack, I refer to an advanced network. Basically, you're using isolated uh, networks, right? So this is an isolated network, uh, and uh, your uh, virtual router is the gateway to the whole world. So your virtual router implements uh, DNS, DHCP, load uh, balancing, uh, everything, like source net, desk net. Uh, obviously, if you want to, uh, work with enterprise loads, this isn't scalable because uh, you run into a lot of bottlenecks. Um, uh, virtual router, uh, again, resides on a Zen, and you have like this DOM0 problems with Zen. Uh, and uh, if you want to handle large, large traffic, then this easily becomes a bottleneck. So what we wanted to do is to integrate. Uh, so our motivation for uh, adding uh, Apollo Alto support is uh, to have uh, an enterprise level of uh, firewall. Uh, there was other motivation, obviously. Uh, uh, there was a customer requirement. Since we manage a lot of uh, customers, and they have a requirement of uh, uh, basically having some kind of, uh, in, uh, kind of uh, uh, outlook into their traffic. So they wanted to see what kind of traffic is going in. They wanted to do some kind of an IDS. Uh, um, and uh, let's say they have, uh, they wanted to go for a PCI compliance, then they need to have logging of all the traffic that's going in. So right now, using the current uh, firewall, CS or virtual router based firewalls, that's uh, nothing is possible. So uh, yeah, so this is one of the other motivations. All right, so for our integration, what we do is we let uh, the virtual router, so the virtual router is still there, it's, it's uh, doing its thing. Uh, so the virtual router provides uh, DNS and DHCP, so we haven't taken that out of uh, virtual router because we don't need that. But uh, the remaining things which are left are source NAT, uh, static NAT, port forwarding and firewall, all are managed and uh, implemented on the Palo Alto. And uh, the Polo Alto can be completely configured from the CloudStack interface using uh, the standard uh, firewall APIs or the UI. Right, so uh, a Polo Alto has a concept of a sub-interface. So you have a basic interface, and you can have a multiple sub-interfaces inside that. So what we do is for each guest network, we create a sub-interface on the Palo Alto. So I'm not sure if you guys can see this. So uh, the, the top layer, that one is the Palo Alto, and these are the guest networks. So you have, uh, for each guest network, uh, a private network or a sub-interface sub created on the Palo Alto, and all the sub-interfaces go to the, uh, so you see AE1 is the public interface, and AE2 is the private interface. So uh, each Guest network has a sub-interface, and correspondingly, they have an entry or they have a public IP for that interface. <clears throat> uh, 
All right. So uh, in our implementation, uh, it's not completely plug and play. We have to be basically do some kind of a pre-configuration on uh, the Polo Alto. So uh, these are the steps. So the first thing you need to do here is uh, to add a virtual router in Polo Alto. Now, <coughs> this virtual router is different from what you what the virtual router in CloudStack. So when you speak of a virtual router in uh, Polo Alto, it is basically a configuration uh, grouping of uh, your routes uh, and uh, other routing configurations. So basically, you have to configure some kind of a policy on the Polo Alto. Uh, so this is just like a pre-configuration step. Uh, you have to add basically a static route. I will probably show you show this in the demo. Uh, it'll uh, make things more clear. Right. So after adding that, you need to add a public interface. So that this interface is the one which connects you to the internet. Um, again, this is one of those uh, pre-configuration steps. Uh, we are still trying to uh, see if we can automate this. So everything should be plug and play. Um, uh, if we have the time and budget, oh, we probably will look into this. So once you have done the pre-configuration step, it's uh, smooth sailing on after that. Uh, uh, so you basically add Polo Alto again, like any other device, uh, using uh, the network, uh, network service offerings, and uh, like give all the information, uh, and then all, you're set. So you can create network offerings using the Polo Alto, as the, so you still have to have uh, DNS and DHCP, which is not shown in here, but uh, the remaining firewall port, na uh, port forwarding and NATs can be configured using the Polo Alto. Uh, once you have the offering, you can create a network from that offering uh, using either the networks or when you create a VM, it asks for uh, adding a new network. So you can add a new network. So once you do that, all your port forwarding and firewall is handled by the cloud stack for that network. So what's actually happening when you uh, create a network uh, and, uh, and uh, like allocate a VM? So what happens is uh, <clears throat> you create a public private interface. So this is a private interface for that network which you just created. And uh, you also have something called, so you, all, all, you have this uh, source NAT rule basically allowing this, the public interface to connect to the private interface. And uh, this is something which we had to add. So this is like an isolated network, isolated, uh, isolate network policy. So what happens here is on the Polo Alto, uh, there is no way or, well, you have, you, when you create different sub interfaces on Polo Alto, uh, by default, they are not isolated from each other. So for each network, I have a sub interface, and they are not isolated. So what we have done is we uh, added this isolate policy explicitly, so that uh, uh, interfaces from one network cannot talk to the other. Right. And again, this is the egress uh, rules. Uh, an interesting th thing here is when someone adds uh, egress rule for zero zero zero, basically allowing all hosts locally to connect to. Uh, elsewhere, when you say uh, 000, uh, what you mean is all hosts in your network. But when, when, if you add this directly on Palo Alto, uh, it means the whole network. Like if you have 10 sub, sub 10 networks, the, if you add this on Palo Alto, all 10 networks will gain access to everything. So you don't want that. So what we do is we take this and we translate uh, 000 to that particular network. Uh, CIDR. Uh, similarly, you have uh, uh, ingress policy rules, uh, basically allow rules. It's, uh, again, uh, very simple. Oh, OK. Uh, yeah, so we do ICMP and T TCP. Uh, so with, there is one more limitation that we don't do complete ICMP. So when you add a firewall rule for ICMP, uh, we basically allow all kinds of ICMP. So uh, we haven't yet added support for fine-grained ICMP um, blocking or firewall. All right. Um, so basically, again, uh, NAT. The so same thing here. So when you create a NAT on the uh, fire on the CloudStack UI, you have another a NAT uh, created in Palo Alto. All right. 
uh, port forwarding, again, similar. Create a port forwarding on the UI. You will get a port forwarding in uh, the Cloud Stack. Oh, sorry, in the Palo Alto. All right. <coughs> okay, so apart from the uh, general firewalls, we have also added support for uh, something called uh, as uh, global policy. So what, what they enable you to do is basically allow you to attach each firewall rule to a specific policy. So a policy can be something like log all traffic which is coming for this uh, uh, port or, law or uh, like uh, block this traffic for this specific port. Some, uh, so this is not yet uh, inside uh, CloudStack. So that you cannot do it via the UI. What you can do via the UI is j tell that whenever I create this rule, attach it to this policy, and then you go back to the Polo Alto to configure this policy. So um, a good example is to have logging for your uh, traffic. So uh, from the UI, you can say, uh, use this policy for logging, and then uh, your Polo Alto is configured for logging for that uh, policy. So we might, might probably go, I mean, this needs a lot of discussion. So if you want to have uh, policies of firewall on Cloud stack, so the, the, a lot of things have to change. So I will uh, have we we haven't yet uh, completely thought about how we're going to do that, but hopefully we'll, in the future we'll, we'll be able to do that. Um, uh, so this is uh, uh, we also support uh, Palo Alto uh, virtual appliance. Um, one of the key things for our implementation was to have. Uh, uh, compatibility with all uh, Palo Alto devices. So we chose the bare uh, minimum uh, support, or uh, we, we chose the method, or we chose the implementation which is supported by all uh, clouds or uh, all Palo Alto devices. So so that um, we can have uh, you can use any uh, Palo Alto device. So instead, so one of the dec decisions was that instead of using VSYS, which is a better option for isolation, we used uh, um, sub interfaces, and we had to add our isolate policies manually. So stuff like this uh, uh, we, uh, we chose because we want to support more devices. Um, and uh, yeah, so we, we have some implement, uh, well, we have some uh, uh, limitations. The first one is uh, obviously the, we require some kind of initial configuration, which uh, uh, you, uh, for a new, new, new beginner who hasn't used uh, Palo Alto, it can be a bit tricky. Uh, I mean, I myself have uh, uh, done something wrong two, three times before actually getting it right. Um, and then the next one is, uh, there is, again, a limitation on the public IP range. So right now, we only support one public IP range. Uh, this is, again, coming back to how uh, your Palo Alto handles uh, public interface. So we have only one public interface, or rather we only support one public interface, so you can have only one range of public IPs. Um, and uh, again, ICMP is not completely supported. We still have to, so right now it's if you enable any ICMP rule, everything is enabled for ICMP. Um, we are also not validating any SSL certificates be which are between the communication between the Cloud Stack and Palo Alto. So basically, uh, uh, even though that manage, that's management traffic, it's not uh, technically available outside. But still, uh, we 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 tend to skip uh, a SSL check. All right. So I'll uh, give you a demo right now. Okay. Um, so let me just bring up Cloud Stack. Wait, one sec. Okay. All right. Mm. Okay. 
Right, a bit slow. Okay, so uh, by the time that loads, I will give you basic. Uh, uh, how many? How many of you guys have used uh, Palo Alto before? Okay, so not many. That's good. Um, okay, so here is how it looks when you log in. And where is my mouse? Uh, Okay, so here's what it looks when you log in. Uh, basically, uh, the interfaces, there are two interfaces here. Uh, we know that uh, how we have set up our network. Based on that, this connects to the public internet, and this is our, this connects to our private network. So this is the public interface, this is the private interface. Um, we also have something called as virtual routers here. Uh, this is something which we need to pre-configure. Um, right now, it's, uh, so again, this virtual routers, are not cloud stack virtual routers. They are basically a uh, place to set up your configuration of uh, routes and uh, other uh, routing parameters. Um, so what, the first thing we need to do is to create a virtual router. Uh, I'll just add one. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm editing the default virtual router and I'm adding a static route. So this static route is basically the one which connects you to the internet or basically connects the firewall to the internet. Um, okay, let me look up. Uh... <clears throat> All right, so let's add this public, uh, cloud stack public. Uh, destination is, again, for all hosts. So I'll put 000 slash zero. Um, uh, forget interface for now. So I'm using the next hop here. I will put the next hop. I have it here. Copy paste it here. OK, uh, one important thing to note here is the next hop here should be outside of the CloudStack's IP range. CloudStack has its own public IP range, which you give when you configure, configure it. And this has to be outside that, uh, because this is not managed by CloudStack. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. This is the next hop. So this, um, sorry. So this next hop is uh, my router's address. Um, that's it. So I'm done here. All right, once you've configured this, you need to add a public interface. So this is my pub, uh, public interface. So I'll add a public sub, sub interface. So again, cancel this, add sub interface. Oh, OK. So even before adding the sub-interface, I need to make sure that these are L3 uh, interfaces. So I, I, I will change my interface type to L3. Uh, OK. And this is my private interface. This connects to this connects my hosts. Uh, I'll make this as L3. And, and there we go. <clears throat> All right, now this is my public side. I will add a sub interface. Right, okay, so here's, there's a bit of naming convention here we follow. Uh, so the name of the interface should be the same as the VLAN that you have for your public, uh, public traffic. Um, so right now in my setup, I have uh, the public traffic going through this VLAN. I'll just copy paste that. So this is my VLAN for public uh, traffic. If you don't have a, a VLAN for public traffic, you need to replace that with 9999. Uh, that's just a naming convention we follow. Um, and there we go. Uh, one of the things here I will do is I will, I will assign this default virtual router to the sub interface. So uh, forget about the security zone right now. Uh, I'll tell you once we are up. There you go. So you have uh, the sub interface. And I hope the cloud stack has been loaded. Yep. So there we go. We have cloud stack admin password. 
right? So I'll go in uh, infrastructure, zones. I have a default zone, uh, physical network. And then I go here and configure my uh, service providers. So right now you see Palo Alto is, a, is disabled. So, and uh, if, you, if you see view devices, there, there are no Palo Altos right now. So I'll just add a Palo Alto device. So um, <clears throat> this is my, oh. I'll add, this is my Palo Alto's uh, IP. Puff username admin, admin, Palo Alto. So public interface, if you remember, was uh, Ethernet 1 slash 1, this one. Oh, where's my mouse? Okay, yeah. So this is a public interface. Uh, and uh, Ethernet 1 slash 2 is the private interface. So let's just add that. Ethernet 1 slash 1. Ethernet 1 slash 2. Right. Okay. So these are, so public network and private network are on two zones. So uh, CloudStack, uh, or sorry, Palo Alto has a concept of zones, which it, which it uses to separate traffic. And untrusted zone is basically name given for public network. And uh, a trusted zone is a private network. So I'll just uh, let them be default. Virtual router was uh, default. This is what, the one which we configured in uh, the Palo Alto. Uh, let's just leave these for now. So these are the uh, manual, uh, or sorry, these are the uh, custom profiles that you can add. And I'll just click OK. So it's adding. OK, so I think this will fail, and I'll tell you why. Um, so the thing with Palo Alto is you need to, uh, your, even if you save your configuration, you need to commit that. So that's some kind of a. Like, I don't know why they do it, but, <laughs> but yeah, that's how it works. So right now it's an uncommitted state, so it, uh, it won't allow me to add anything else. So Okay, so I'll just commit this first so that I can start adding stuff. Safety first, right? Yeah. <laughs> Can't find it in phase default. Oh, oh, sorry, I gave, I think I gave the wrong IP. Let me just go back and check that. Um, yeah, this seems right. Oh, 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 sorry. I did not give an IP to my interface. So this was my public interface. Uh, I need to give it, give this an IP. I'm sorry. So this is, so this was the IP which I was talking about. So this IP needs to be outside of CloudStack's range. Uh, so this is something which I know is outside, and I know my network cider is 25. So I'll just add this. All right, let's commit this. Please look. All right, uh, this is a warning. You can just ignore this. Uh, the zones are automatically configured by the Palo Alto. Uh, so uh, for now, forget about that. Um, yay, it's done. OK. All right, let's go back to uh, CloudStack and start adding in uh, the devices. 
Okay, let's go, let's do the same drill again. This time it should work. Hmm. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Demo successful. OK, no, we are not done yet. Um, but yeah, this was the, the most. <laughs> Painful thing. Okay. Right. Okay. So we are we have added this. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to enable our device. Uh, let's go back to physical network. Right. Um, just enable this. So now, once you enable this, you can start creating a network offerings using Palo Alto. So. Let's go back. OK, this, gets, this, this will get enabled. Yeah, it's very slow. All right, so it's enabled. Let's go to service offerings, compute network offerings. And um, I actually already have a, OK, let's, I'll show you. Um, so, so this is a Palo Alto offering. Um, guest app is isolated, right? So DHCP and the DNS are provided by the virtual router. Uh, we are not using load balancing. Source NAT is provided by uh, Palo Alto. Static NAT is provided by Palo Alto. Uh, put forwarding again as provided by the Palo Alto. And finally, firewall. Did I, did I already take firewall? Oh, yeah, thanks. As provided by firewall, uh, Palo Alto. Uh, system offering, uh, da, 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 done. Okay, that's not letting me add because this is basically essentially the same thing as that. So I'll just enable this offering. Um, it's basically the same thing as what I did. And I cannot remove this because of some weird issue. All right, so now we have our, <coughs> sorry. I'm not, now we have our network offering. Let's go ahead and create some instances using that network offering. Um, All right, I'll create a new network. So I'll name this uh, PA network. And I'm using this network offering. So, it, so I have this network with Apollo Alto doing uh, all the firewall and source net, this net, and other nets. OK, so this takes some time. So let's, so once, while this is getting created, let's go back to our um, Palo Alto. So I hope, um, okay, let's refresh this. Right, now you see what's happened here is on the public side, you have a new IP uh, for that network, and on the private side, you have a new sub interface for the network which we just created. Uh, we have policies as well. So, okay, let's look at zones. So, Palo Alto by default creates two zones, trusted and untrusted. Trusted zone is the Ethernet 1 slash 2. Basically, it's the private zone. Public zone is untrusted 1 slash 1. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so, let's look at some policies. So, these are the firewall rules. So 
you have the isolated firewall policy, which allows only, I mean, which does not allow inter-guest network communication. Uh, you have, again, the source net policy, which is basically um, your uh, Polo Alto is again acting as a default gateway for all your VMs, and the source netting is basically the same thing. Which, uh, I mean, this is basically the default thing. Uh, it's allowing from a trusted zone to untrusted zone. So all these policies are created on the fly. On I mean, uh, so th all these policies are created by our plugin. Um, I think we have the, OK, it's starting. Uh, well, while it gets started, I can show you. I don't know which one it's being used right now. Um, OK. So again, this is again your egress rules. So if I add 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 slash 0, um, and uh, I want all maybe to the 1,000. Oh, so I didn't get a zero there. Sorry. Oh. Mm -hmm. OK, weird. Sorry. Let me try that again. So what this uh, what I have added is a policy so that all my hosts from can talk from one to one thousand twenty four ports can connect outside. So uh, well, this get, is getting added. So when I say zero dot zero dot zero uh, on the Polo Alto, I will be having a policy for this subnet. So, so it gets translated to the correct subnet. All right, so do I have time? No. <laughs> all right, so yeah, I mean, I think this is all I have. Uh, you can create all other firewall rules, basically it's something like this, yes. Well, the thing is, um, uh, I, I, you have to sh uh, dedicate it for uh, CloudStack. Because if you start uh, configuring using some other method, uh, it creates a conflict between how CloudStack manages the Palo Alto and how you manage it. So yeah, there are, yeah, you cannot, like for now, you cannot share it. Do you think there would be I don't, I don't know if uh, Palo Alto has a DHCP server. Yeah, we, we've looked at that. Um, we, it didn't look flexible enough. What we, what we decided to do actually was look at sort of a more flexible uh, DNS, DHCP, more, or, or an IPAM appliance, something like a Blue Cat or, or uh, Infobox. Uh, in, the, in theory, it's possible, but I think we wouldn't normally Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Didn't get it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um. Oh, sorry. Here. Oh. So, okay, the VM is created now. Good. All right, so this cider. Yes, yes, yes. So we know we know for this uh, account or for this network what the guest cider is. So we just uh, dynamically map it.
Uh, as far as I know, we have a different sub, uh, well, yeah, 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 you're right. I mean, we used, uh, we, yes, yes. So we, we assume that uh, there is a different uh, subnet for each in guest network. I'm sorry? Yes, yes. So that's one of our assumptions that uh, uh, every guest network will have a different uh, cider. That's a good point because we did have, because uh, you do have to uh, uh, configure cloud stack to support that as well, right? Mm, yes. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. I'll, okay. Yeah. We can. We can try pop off. Uh, yes. Uh, well, we haven't yet completely discussed that. Well, probably, maybe in the next. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, in the in the table or not. Uh, no LB. It's only firewall. Yes, yes. Is that because there's a worker process in, in the CSM where it's going to go and remove rules that are not going to be in the or something like that? Well, as long as you do not uh, like cross paths with what uh, CloudStack is doing, you can still use. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. It's more of a best practice, like, you know, if you decide to go and configure stuff, um, you know, you're, you're kind of on your own. Let's say it says, you know, yeah. you start to overlap with it. Or you can say I'm going to throw up best practices out the window. Awesome. I want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, right? <laughs> but once you've broken the glass, you're right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> start over, right? <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. So, yeah. So, finally, there's, uh, we have a party. Uh, okay, where's the slide? Uh, there you go. Yeah, so all of you guys are invited. Um, and also, if you guys are, have some time, you can fill in a survey which we are running. Cool.